How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and attempt the mission Wooden Bridge and uh, yeah I was trying to sort of mix things up, do things a bit differently so uh, I need wooden planks, eight wooden planks. I wasn't sure how many I had left in my sawmill, I could probably check but either way I thought uh, yeah I'll bring a Tega with me, uh, get some long logs on the way, kind of trade them in for wooden planks and carry on. Not that it would make much difference but those loaves <laughs> this time are actually needed because sadly it won't let me pack the Tega on the trailer when it's got its own trailer if I disconnect the trailer it will let me pack the Tega but yeah so those loafs I've kind of positioned wedged up as best as I can in front and behind and then packed them so at least the Tega's locked in place as far as like rolling forwards and backwards goes hoping it'd kind of help it stay on um yeah gonna come down grab logs from there and go to uh, that sawmill and then kind of zip it around this way and uh, go to the wooden bridge there and I'm gonna have to cut through that kind of lake section just above the uh, railway because yeah like the path that cuts out that section is good if you're just traveling on your own or with a relatively normal uh, cargo load but as I said because I can't pack that Tager which was a bit of a shame I kind I remember checking it before I'm pretty sure but I wasn't I couldn't remember 100% so I wanted to see if it was possible or maybe they'd uh, adjusted it I don't think I'd tried packing a truck and a trailer on a trailer uh, since I'd found out that you can pack loose and stuff on the top of various trucks so yeah I thought maybe it's uh, they are pretty free with what you can and can't pack and all sorts but yeah sadly it won't let you do that in which case a trailer like this would be quite nice if it had like I mean a sideboard trailer but it doesn't even have to be like a full-on sideboard if it just had a little lip down each side just enough to catch the tires that'd uh, stop it yeah sliding off either way and like I said the loafs have got it kind of locked in place pretty well but yeah for this one as well we've got the collab had to go and bring the base out this thing is definitely a pretty good hauling machine particularly since I've added the whole uh, raisable suspension thing with it because one thing that I used to suffer with a lot was going over rocks and uh, yeah there's definitely plenty of rocks in this game but just the amount that it lets you lift the suspension is enough to where 99% of rocks all but the meatiest of rocks kind of just you might bumble over them a bit but yeah they keep going they don't just completely lock you up back in the day this thing could get caught on some pretty small rocks considering uh, I remember in a video a little while back what map was it on probably Lake Cov, Lake Cov Doramandra and uh, yeah my collab got stuck on a rock that was like that one I just ran over it was ridiculous it's probably a bit bigger than that but it wasn't a lot bigger and I had the loaf with me at the time surprise surprise and uh, that thing was jumping over all kinds of rocks that were like five times the size as I've shown before in various videos the loaf has climbed rocks bigger than itself and got over them he is just of course a goddamn professional and that is why you bring a loaf like I said I would have brought one anyway undoubtedly I mean in my defense I could have also stuck one on the club's head which I did think about well in fact I take that back. I didn't think about it because it's a completely natural thing to do. I had to think about not doing it. <laughs> and I thought, well, I've already got two loafs with me, kind of locking the Tager in place. And, uh, yeah, the other thing I was obviously trying to test with what I'm doing now was uh, can I pack logs onto the Tager while it's on the trailer? Which, to be fair, by now I had a pretty good feeling I'd be able to, especially that it wouldn't let me pack it. If it had let me pack it, um, I know I probably wouldn't be able to load logs then while it's packed because like, I can't access the loafs roof racks and stuff while it's packed but yeah by now I ha kind of had a good feeling there's no reason why it should stop me because I'm only just sat on top of a trailer as I said I'm not packed or anything like that so as long as there's nothing in the way and uh, yeah as I said before normally I don't bring this trailer out a whole lot the uh, the 8 slot because yeah it's pretty bloody massive and it's like as you're trying to go around most corners it just uh, it cuts in quite a lot as well so it's a uh, yeah it's a bit of a corner cutting trailer and start getting it hooked on stuff. The other problem with this trailer is it's got a lot of things underneath it that catch on all sorts of stuff other than just the legs themselves. But you can see all those little boxes and things poking out. I think all those, uh, yeah, they can get caught on all sorts as well. So, uh, Yeah, like I said, I had to cut over here. It was just the smoothest route to the uh, railway, which I'm then going to kind of swear around to the right from that to the log station. Um, yeah, as I said, going the other way, there's just too many angles and all sorts it'd be bad enough just with this trailer alone anyway let alone trying to keep the uh, Tager balance on it as far as cutting through here though all things considered that I've got an 8 slot, 2 loafs and the Tager with a trailer um, yeah I was kind of happy as long as it, if it stayed in the high low and I could just kind of keep it floored and it'd creep through at this 
rate. Again, as it's only a little section, this bit I don't really mind. I do think it is a little bit over trollish. Like I said, it's to the point where most trucks struggle through here, and it's like it's just one of those areas now that you avoid. But at least in the Clubs uh, case, yeah, it is. Like I said, it's a bit of a uh, a heavy hauling machine. It's got plenty of tyres that can actually reach around for grip. Like I said, now it's got a bit of a better suspension situation, so that big sort of chassis plate at the front doesn't completely ruin everything. And uh, yeah, to be fair to it, it did climb through there pretty well. It didn't ever, it was a little bit near the end, it was looking a little bit close. I was, I was bumping over rocks and stuff, apologies, there was a little tiny glitch there. Yeah, again these rocks, which really, when you think about it, if you're reopening this map, you would just clear the rocks off this road. <laughs> like, I can get it on some roads, but the main road leading down to the railway, surely. And again, I'd happily do it myself, but... It'll only put them back there next time I load it. In fact, actually, I'm going to have to do that at some point. I will move those rocks and I'll park a trailer there because I actually want to test once and for all if the trailer will just stop things resetting. As I've said before, for anyone who wonders what I'm going on about, like when I used to smash through the ice in Lake Covd, I put a few um, trailers there to try and act as bridges over the ice, just testing to see. And inevitably I ended up just abandoning the trailers for a bit and leaving them there. And then when I came back to the map, even after I'd turned the game off and all sorts, um, those bits of ice that I'd already broke weren't reset and refreshed. They were still broken. And I worked out in the end that it was like when a trailer was nearby, it wasn't resetting. And I just quickly towed the trailer far enough away, loaded another map up, loaded that map back up. And uh, yeah, then the ice was repaired. So essentially this game doesn't reset the environment if there's something too close to it so yeah maybe I could remove those rocks and uh, yeah like I said stick a trailer there and it might stop it resetting I know you can get hooked on train tracks a little bit but I do kind of refuse to believe that <laughs> a club like this would wouldn't be able to turn full lock to the right and get off them like to do a bit of a reverse manoeuvre. Again as well, because I'm taking this trailer, I'm kind of having to hit everything a lot wider than usual. And yeah, to be fair, I mean, there's certainly easy ways of doing this mission. For one, well, I kind of needed the eight slot, I suppose, because I need eight planks of wood. And I also, in this case, I might have had eight planks of wood at the sawmill. But, yeah. I don't know. And again, it was just I kind of wanted to do for the sakes of the mission. you got to kind of, uh, yeah, take logs to the sawmill, swap them out for wooden planks. And sadly, we got that far and it tipped. So I quickly turned the game off and reloaded it just because I wanted to see. I kind of, as I cut up, you can see the rocks I kind of run over. It tilted the trailer too much. This trailer as well, other than the fact that it's pretty bloody long, it's a little bit bendy. It's not the end of the world and it's not that bad. But yeah, there's just so much trailer, it's got room to kind of flex a bit, so... Once I started tipping there, the uh, the weight of the tag was too much, and it took it with it. Wasn't looking much better this way. In the meantime, a little bit I cut out, I uh, started the tag up and used some of the winches to the stumps down there and kind of lined it back up on the trailer a little bit better. And uh, yeah, if, from a few previous videos, I've done this hill is a bit of a beast. To be fair, again, considering what the club is uh, towing. It's not having too many troubles. It's getting a bit iffy with grip now. It keeps doing a... It was wheeling a little bit more than I remember. I thought the Kolob... Not full-on wheeling, but it was like there clearly wasn't enough weight planted on the front for it to kind of really dig those front tyres in. But yeah, a little bit of winching on the tree to help me up there. I probably could have just kept flooring it and got up there, but <laughs> it's not that. The winches are there. I'm using them. It's funny though, actually. Like Since playing this game, obviously a hell of a lot, using the winches, even when I've played any other game, when I played Grand Theft Auto 5 the other month, uh, like I said, I've been playing a little bit of Wreckfest recently, <laughs> it's like, just automatically wish there was a winch on everything now. Every time you roll a car, it's just, yeah, it'd be extremely handy. So again, having to hit it nice and wide so that trailer doesn't catch on all the trees. It's not going too badly so far. Well, again, we had to did, uh, yeah, we had to kind of turn the game off and start it up again, but <laughs> it's not the first time. It certainly won't be the last. And uh, yeah, this is a login station up here. To be honest, I, as I was looking through all of them, this was kind of like 
the only one that would even remotely have a chance of getting there with this Taiga on the trailer without it being packed. The logging station that's like unlimited logs is just, yeah, that'll be a disaster. Um, and then just, oh, the various other ones, a few of them haven't even got long logs anyway. Or they might have had, but I've robbed them by now. Overall, by the way, if you're going to take logs to the uh, sawmill to swap them, you want to take the long logs because you get a hell of a lot more uh, wood for your logs, basically. If you're going to take a load, yeah, you may as well make it uh, worth it. So, I was just unpacking the loads now. Now we've got here to move this one back so the, uh, the long logs can actually fit in the trailer. Again, it was pretty handy that this trailer's got enough, got enough length to do it. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. It did actually let me pack the logs, which was nice. That's one way it didn't try and mess me around. Again, a bit of edit in there, but I just shifted the loads around, kind of wedged them back up against the Taiga again, got them all packed, and uh, we're off. Off to the sawmill. Well, that was the plan anyway. This was the one bit I was worrying about. I've kind of got to go round this brick building. I was looking there, could I just go straight ahead between that tree and the back of the building? But there was a lot of things on the ground. I wasn't sure if they'd be like absolutely solid in place or if I'd be able to ram it out of the way. So then I thought, if I go round where that blue dot is, the tail will tip off. I just, I know it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, trying to cut through here. Did my horn, seeing if those boxes would kind of break and fall through the map. But yeah, sadly... It's not. My uh, me club is caught up on it somehow, so. And, uh, yeah, really wasn't wanting to go round to the left or whatever of that wood, so I was going to try and reverse it back up, possibly even chance going round the back again. Yeah, there's just too much angle there. I'm not sure what happens to be honest. Once you take the bricks from there, I'm not sure. I know it usually packs like the structures away, but I don't know how easy it'd be to get over after that. But anyway, reversing here, and it tipped, and look, the saving cogs came up just as it was tipping, so there was no way of uh, getting it back. But you see, of course, it's that time again. This is one of the many reasons you get yourself a loaf, bring a professional along, and uh, everything is sold. So at the minute, yeah, the Tager's tipped. I mean, this was my kind of plan anyway, but worst case, it'll tip off. I can uh, rescue the Tager and just kind of take it to the, uh, the sawmill. The normal way, <laughs> the boring way. But yeah, first, got to send in the loaf, because when it tipped, two of the logs stayed in pretty well, but one of the logs skidded its way out. And at this point, I mean, in theory, I could detach the trailer on the club and flip the taker, but getting this log back in, I mean, look at him. What a beast. Slips that log straight in. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. And, uh, oh yeah. And that's why you need to get yourself a loaf. And that's where I don't think the Taker would have been able to push that log in because I think it would have just run over it, basically. Its tyres are big enough that it would just kind of climb over it, whereas that's what I mean with the loaf. He has got little tyres, but they come in handy here and there because <laughs> he's the only vehicle I know that can kind of dig loaf holes and just grip in on the uh, various terrain. Here, I had a bad feeling anyway, only because it's like sloping down. And that makes it a bit hard to dig loaf holes because you can see from the angle of the winch, it's kind of... Even if my back tyres sank in a bit, like the angle of it's pulling me straight back out. So, is that right? Scoot a bit further over to this side where it's a little bit flatter. <laughs> I know my winch distances. Drop the hammer. Keep it pinned, fingers crossed. Loaf digs deep. I mean, what a goddamn horse. Flips a Tager. And a large logging trailer. And three logs. Oh yeah, same. The trailer's not right, quite at the right angle. It's a little bit fussy, but again, for any of you that remember Mudrunner, that was incredibly, <laughs> painfully fussy. How accurate you had to have the trailer straight and on a level surface and everything for it to accept the logs. So uh, yeah, at this point, oh, I could either tow the Tager behind the club, but as the trailer's so long, it'll just be a corner-cutting monster. So I figured we'll send the Tager in front. Trying to winch to this, trying to give it a little bit of room to get around, but I think it ends up getting snagged. Yeah, the Tager's pretty nice for hauling the logs, to be honest. It's certainly got enough power to handle them pretty well on their own. And for the most part, the large log trailer, 
it's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than uh, yeah the medium log trailer. That thing just tips for fun. Like at least with a large log trailer, because half of it is attached to your truck. If you've got a decent truck that doesn't roll very easily, it kind of ups the uh, the non-rollability of the whole thing itself. Whereas yeah, that medium trailer is just unless you're driving down a road, the thing just wants to tip all the time. It's a bit of a shame. There's quite a few missions and ideas I'd kind of like to do, but just when you look at the route, it's like there's no point. It will go horrifically wrong. See, again, it was a shame. If you could pack trailers, you could get a trailer like this and probably put two to three medium log trailers on it and uh, pack them. And again, it'll be a little bit iffy once you get there. But you might be able to... I don't know. I don't know. It'd be a bit, a bit difficult. I was going to say, take another vehicle that can just kind of connect to the trailers from the side or something, get them packed, disconnect. Probably more hassle than it's worth. Again, hopefully sooner rather than later, they add more options. I've seen the free your logs mod or something. I appreciate the people who have been letting me know about that. Um, yeah, that allows you to like auto load logs onto the new mod trucks. But even then, just with the standard trucks alone, I mean, what we got like 40 or 50 trucks in this game by now. Well, definitely over 40. I think there was 44 odd when it came out, so we must have yeah around 50. And uh, there's only the cat that I know of still that can actually hold medium logs and again because it can't tow trailers that kind of makes it just as irrelevant as any other truck that can tow a medium log trailer and then that can carry one set of logs as you can see though I mean I know the ta uh, the club is kind of driving along as well but yeah the Tager's pulling along pretty nicely the club was helping us through that little muddy swampy bit in the middle it was just kind of ramming into the logs and helping us, which again, with a long log trailer, it all works out nicely. If it was pushing on a medium log trailer full of logs, it wouldn't surprise me if it'd find a way to rotate and tip. They usually do. And you can see as well, I haven't got a crane with me on this one, like a logging crane. I couldn't fit one on the Tager, but I wanted to bring the Tager. <laughs> well, I thought the Tager would fit quite nicely on that uh, on the trailer. I didn't want to take a truck that was like massive that would just yeah, eat the whole trailer up. But we're here, and yeah, as I was saying, you want to bring long logs, because as you'll see when I trade them in, drop one lot of long logs, go to this bit, you get like two planks of wood for each medium one, or four planks of wood for each long one, and obviously each long cargo of logs is made up of three logs, and it lets you cash in all three individually. I'm not actually sure, say for example if I just brought one log there, so it's not a full long log load, um... I'm not sure if that actually let me just cash that in or if you have to bring, you know, a full load's worth, but then it splits it into the three individual logs. I'm not too sure, but either way, I got 12, uh, yeah, 12 planks of wood from that. And to be honest, I might have already had eight planks there because I think I had 20 by the end of it. But still, I didn't know that. I actually thought I might have had about six there. I took a set of medium and long logs here a week or two ago and cashed them all in, so I knew I had uh, plenty here for a while. And yeah, it's one of the few times the uh, the eight slot trailer. It's pretty handy for that. Well, again, it's handy. I mean, it's an eight slot trailer. I've tried to use it. I've tried to like it. <laughs> I've just been caught out so many times by it. But as I said, the game itself isn't really designed for a trailer this big in mind. I doubt they had an idea to add this from the beginning. Or either way, that I mean, they'd have to change like the nature of every map for this thing to be able to sort of go anywhere. But yeah, what's that done? Eight logs, uh, eight logs, eight planks, loaded up. Still got one horse. I left the other horse, by the way. I kind of knew that was going to be the case anyway, um, that I was going to have to jump one of them off when I get the planks. But like I said, they were both acting as kind of wedges to lock the uh, Tager in place, so I didn't mind leaving him. He's all good. He's certainly a professional. He can handle himself. Uh, yeah, just quickly unpack the loaf. Stuck the roof rack fuel into the club. I am basically next to a fuel station now, but I trust my loaf. Like I said, he is a goddamn professional, and uh, yeah, I trust he has given me enough fuel. He's calculated things correctly, and we will make it. And yeah, you can see the pathway there. I had a choice now. I could go left or right, go back up like over that railway bridge that I've got built, so that's nice. But there's all that trollish mud after that. And to be fair, this thing will probably drive through it, but it will just be a 
I'd end up cutting it out of the video, it'd be five minutes of me driving half a mile an hour. And that's about it. <laughs> so, I'd rather go this way. It's, uh, it might be longer, but at least they're actually driving and there's things happening. You can definitely tell the difference, though. Now the Tager's off there. It's, uh... Yeah, that was definitely increasing the, uh the weight like the club was feeling it a little bit but it's not too bad now it's still in high even up this hill I had a few trucks the other week that were stalling up here in high they weren't liking it I thought at this point you'll see me go to put it in auto when it bounced up them rocks I lost a lot of my speed but to its credit it stayed in high so I was like oh well fair enough stick it back in high and we're away I was curious by this point as well to see how well this trailer would do through these paths down here because I've taken quite a lot of cargo down here but I don't think I've ever brought one of these. The nice thing though now, now there's no Tega or anything to tip off, the loaf is packed, the planks are packed, the collob is... This isn't the hardest collob to tip, the, uh, the long nose collob definitely wins the prize for that. That, that thing is practically untippable like until it's already tipped, if that makes sense. I've near enough had it on its side and it's just got so much weight low down in that that it just wants to return back to its wheels and it's, uh, yeah, you'll be doing pretty well if you manage to actually roll that and keep it on its roof. <laughs> Again, my horse, he managed to roll the uh, collab. But yeah, this collab is still up there as far as trucks that are uh, pretty difficult to tip. It's still got plenty of weight low down, so... The chances are the trailer isn't going to try and take me with it kind of thing. There's enough enough weight with the uh, the club that it's kind of in control of this particular set. Like I said, with certain other trucks, there's a lot of... Uh, once the trailer starts going, it'll just take your truck with it. Which, that's a problem with a lot of the lighter trucks. Stuff like the, uh, the Steptoe. It's not a bad truck. It's actually pretty solid. It's got decent power to weight. It's got relatively small tyres, but every now and then when I've used it before, it's uh, even when I did the review on it, it was kind of... Yeah, pleasantly surprising how decent it was in certain situations. Extremely good at not tipping as well, because what little weight it does have must be low down. But yeah, just because there is like nothing to it. Again, when you've got like a trailer heavily loaded up, it's uh, there's not a lot of weight on the step toe to plant it in the ground to get the grip anyway. But yeah, if the trailer tips, it's uh, you're going with it. There's not really any fight in it. And at this point, I was looking now because what I could have and possibly should have done is just, before I went through that river, cut along this beach, and I was looking now, I was like, oh, there is pretty much a direct line to that wooden bridge. And obviously you can see my little line, like, the way I've chose. I was going to kind of carry following along to the uh, brick factory, and then take a left there, kind of go down this little gorge in the in the mountain side or whatever, or hillside, and, uh, yeah, pop out pretty much next to the wooden bridge. And this is me currently fighting my conscience. <laughs> I was like, do I go that way or not? Oh, you could see there as well. It wasn't just me fighting my conscience, actually. The whole power situation again, I was in the high-low, floored it. The wheels were just doing nothing. Kind of had to jiggle it around a little bit to get it moving again. Which, again, I'd, it's just rare that a club does that kind of thing, especially when... I was not that far off level ground, as far as the trailer was concerned, it was kind of in the river anyway, I was on a bit of a hill myself, but yeah, it was a little bit iffy. And again, I wouldn't particularly blame the Kolob, it's whatever they've done recently to the gears, boxes and stuff, to try and make their uh, fine tune some kind of, like, to fit in and make sense that, yeah, they seem to have broke everything else. And again, I was still looking around thinking, well, do I <laughs> do I go the beach way? But I don't know, for some reason I started driving up here. And uh, yeah, well, originally I'd cut through here. I've done it quite a lot. It's quite a handy little place. Cuts off like, uh, you can see, I'd have to loop around to that log station otherwise. But I was looking and it's kind of, again, another sort of, gorge, a little scar in the mountain that's uh, head straight down to the beach. I was like, do you know what? The opportunity has presented itself twice and there's time to go. Driving along, things are going all good. Hit something, get whiplash. Oh, what the hell? 
and it's an immovable double-sized tree stump. Not only that though, they've even hid it in a bush. I mean, don't get me wrong, there is upsides to hiding your wood in a bush. Living the dream, but yeah. Do that on your own time, not on my mission. But we're all good, fortunately it wasn't that bad. So I was able to reverse and get around it, it wasn't about to catch the trailer or anything. Yeah, come flying out here. <laughs> smash our way through the rest of them trees, do a nice little drift onto the beach, and we're good to go. I would uh, certainly recommend this. Whatever I just hit is probably a pretty juicy rock. Oh no, probably nothing. Just managed to smack its own chin on the floor. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot better. Again, if where I cut through that river, if I'd just gone to the left in the first place, and kind of popped out on the beach. Not seen that little uh, bridge there before, but we'll be checking that out at some point. And yeah, apart from like this little section here, there's quite a lot of rocks again, nothing too crazy though. And uh, well, yeah, I'd certainly say this is a faster option anyway than the way I'd had drawn. And maybe like, that, that little bridge just seen behind me, maybe there is like a little... Well, a decent way to cut from the sawmill across and get to that bridge and maybe make it even quicker. Again, though, it's got to be a half-decent route. If it's just going to be nailed by, like, muddy trenches and everything to get there, then it's just, yeah, it's not really worth it. It doesn't really interest me. I like to at least be travelling this kind of speed. Especially the Kolob is, uh, it's not rapid. It's at least fast enough so that it doesn't make me feel bored or anything, but, yeah. It's uh, much slower, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's go and find something faster. Drop the hammer. Pretty nice views. I was just looking, thinking like, if you had all this free space, I'd build a bigger building than that. Might just be like some kind of fishing shed, but still. I'd have a mega deluxe fishing shed out of a harvest beach, covered in sheds. And uh, yeah, this is the bridge, which, as I said before, now I've just been cutting over each side of it, and it is actually doable, funnily enough, even though you'll see me drive through it soon, and it goes pretty deep. <laughs> Definitely what she said. And, uh, yeah, stuff can drive through this river easier than it can drive through, like, the swampy bit of the farm that is, like, five times shallower. There's eight pieces, eight planks of wood, and that's all you built. I'd expected some ornate carvings adorning, like, a little pitched roof on top of the bridge for eight bloody planks, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that was the mission, though, was it? About six and a half grand. Well, it's... Uh, strictly speaking, I didn't have to put the whole logging situation into it. I could have just drove to the sawmill and that. Not the end of the world. Like I said, money doesn't really matter a whole lot these days anyway. Nor does the XP, sadly. See what I mean? Look, even the club's a pretty tall truck. And that was damn near to the roof of it. Well, it basically was, but I mean, once it levelled out, it couldn't swallow the whole thing. Yeah, I don't even need to say it. If for no apparent reason, I was just looking how well I could line this 8 slot up next to the bridge. If, if by some miracle it fit and lined up pretty damn well, I'd probably just disconnect it now and leave it there as like, <laughs> kind of make it an extra wide bridge. But yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. When I put the legs down it'll sit too tall and all sorts. But yeah, that was about it for today. I started recovering everything back. I was just going to turn this round and typical bites me again. Like, god damn it. But anyway, that's about it for today though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. And I'll be back soon.